Hey hello, I'm Single-Minded Ryan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this sprite trail effect. I bet you must have seen this effect in many 2D video games. It's commonly used when the player is dashing or uh, is speed up. I feel like this is an essential effect if you are making a 2D game. By the way, the game you're looking at is from my Udemy Godot 2D course. If you're interested in uh, my 2D course on Udemy, please check out the link in the description below. All right, let's get started. First, I'll get into my player scene and talk about uh, the general idea. In my player scene, there is an animated sprite 2D node that controls uh, the animation of the player. Basically, it contains different animations for uh, different states. And then I control the animation uh, through the script. So to create the sprite trail effect, I am going to duplicate this animation sprite 2D a couple times. And I am going to stop the animation in the duplicated ones. So it's going to freeze at the time that it's uh, duplicated. This way we are going to have a sequence of sprites that follows the player. And the sprites are going to match the player's previous actions, uh, and this is very important. I'm going to add a new node to manage the sprite trail effect. Right click on the root and add a new child. I'm just going to use the basic node because its only job is to hold a script. Rename the new node to sprite trail. Now we can add a script to it. I'm not going to change anything here, just hit create. In the script, we need a reference to the animated sprite 2D of the player. Let's hold the control key and drag the uh, animated sprite 2D into the script. Next, we are going to write the code in the process function. The process function is a Godot built-in function. Basically, it runs every frame after the physics is processed. First, we need to think about the interval of the sprites. I think I want to have a new sprite every 6 frames. My game runs at 60 frames per second, which means we are going to have 10 sprites uh, per second for the sprite trail. To make this happen, I am going to use an if statement. I use the getFrame function to get the current frame number of the game. Then I'm going to use the modulus operator to find the remainder of a division. So basically, we are going to divide the current uh, frame number by 6. Then we get the remainder. And the remainder is only going to be 0 every 6 frame. Then we know this is the frame to create a new sprite. All right, let's duplicate the animated sprite to denote of the player and store it uh, in a new variable called new sprite. We can call the duplicate function on the sprite2d node to make a copy of it. We also want to specify the type of the new sprite. This way we can call the class functions on it. We also will have access to its class properties. Now let's call the stop function on new sprite to freeze it. By the way, I'm sorry for the uh, confusing name. Even though this variable is called new sprite, but it's actually an animated sprite 2D. And by calling the stop function on it, at the time we duplicate it uh, from the animation sprite 2D of the player, it should be played the same animation as the player uh, at the same frame. So this is going to freeze it at that frame. Next, this new one is not in the game scene yet, so we need to add it to our game scene. I use the getTree function to get the game scene. And then we call the addChild function on the root property of it. This is going to add our new sprite to the game scene. Next, we want to set the global position of the new sprite to the player's global position. So we need a reference to the player. Let's drag the player to the script while holding the control key. And then we set it to the player's global position. But in my case here, I still need to add an offset to the position. Let me show you why. 
my animated sprite to the node actually has an offset from the uh, central point of the player. This is because I want the pivot point of the player in my game to be at its uh, feet. So I offset my animated sprite to the node, and I need to add this offset in the script uh, to make the, uh, the new sprite match the same position. But again, this is just uh, for my specific uh, setup. Uh, you might not need to do this. All right, let's add the offset to our new sprite. Then I think uh, this is a good point for us to run the game to test. I'll activate my game level scene and press the F6 key to uh, run the game. Okay, it seems a little bit messy, but at least we know the code is working. For now, the new sprites are in front of the player. We want to put them behind the player. We can do it by changing the Z index of the new sprite. In my case, the Z index of the animated sprite 2D node of the player is 100. So let's decrease the Z index of the new sprite to zero. And this is going to put it behind the player. All right, it looks better. Now the sprite tail is behind the player. Let's go back to the player scene. Now the sprite tail is too solid. So we want to make it transparent and we want it to uh, fade out. Uh, after a while. To do this, I want to add a new script to the animated sprite 2D node under the player. We don't need this script for the actual animated sprite 2D node of the player. But since we are duplicating new sprites from this animated sprite 2D node, the new copies are going to have this script on them automatically. And then we can make the new sprites fade out by calling a function we are going to write in this script. By the way, I call the script uh, sprite fade. Then I am going to make a new function called update alpha with a float parameter called new value. We want to update the alpha. So let's go back to the 2D view to check out uh, what property should we uh, modify. We can see there is a modulate property in the animated sprite 2D node. And in it, we can change the alpha value of the sprite. We can hover the cursor over modulate to see the property name uh, in the script. All right, let's go back to the script. Let's just set the A value of modulate to our new value. This is going to update the alpha of the sprite with uh, the parameter of this function. Next, let's create a new function called start fading. This is going to be the function that we call uh, to tell the sprite to uh, start fading. To make the fading animation, let's create a new tween. To simply put, tween is a way that we use in Godot uh, when we want to create an animation for a property uh, in the script. This line is going to create a new tween and uh, store it in the variable called new tween. Then we can set up the tween by calling the tween method function on it. Let's pass in the name of the update alpha function as the first uh, parameter. So the tween is going to call this function every frame. The next parameter is the starting value for the parameter uh, of the update uh, alpha function. Let's set it to 0 0.8. So the alpha of the sprite starts at 80%. The next one is the end value. Uh, let's put 0.0. .0. So the, the alpha is going to become zero uh, at the end of the animation. And the last parameter is the duration of the animation. Uh, let's set it to one second. All right, let's go back to the sprite fade script to call this function on the new sprite. For now, Godot cannot help us find the function name since we haven't uh, defined a class. So let's go back to the script and copy the name. Now the sprites in the trail should fade out in one second. Let's run the game to test. All right, it looks pretty good to me. At this time, you might think we have finished the job, but actually we have a huge performance problem if we just leave it here.
you can see on the left side uh, in the scene window, we have countless new objects. These are the animated sprite 3D nodes uh, we just uh, duplicated from the uh, player. And the list is growing longer as we speak since we are duplicating new nodes every six frames. This is going to lead to performance problems and uh, it's probably going to crash your game eventually. The solution is going to recycle the sprites. So whenever a sprite is completely fade out, we uh, reuse it uh, as a new one. So basically, this is a very common technique uh, in game development uh, called the object pool. We often want to recycle and reuse the objects that are not uh, in the game scene, uh, rather than uh, generating the new ones. And you'll find this solution uh, very useful in uh, many different cases. Of course, there are many different ways to implement uh, this idea. To keep this video short and easy to understand, I'll just use an array. So at the top, I declare a new array called Sprite Array. And the type of the array members is animated sprite 2D. Then let's create a function to set up the array. I'm going to call it setup sprite array. Then let's use a for loop to create 10 sprite members for the array. I'm going to copy some script from the process function to the for loop. These lines are going to duplicate a new sprite from the animated sprite 2D of the player and then set up the new sprite. Let's also comment out the remaining two lines in the process function and add a pass keyword to uh, make this function do nothing. Let's also change the alpha of the new sprite to zero uh, right after it's uh, duplicated. Then the most important thing to do here is uh, to add this new sprite to our array. So by the time that uh, this for loop is finished, the array should have like 10 members. All right, to actually set up the array, we need to call this function in the ready function. The ready function is going to run at the beginning of the game. But when the game starts, uh, we immediately get many error messages. It seems like the problem is related to the line where we add the new sprite to the game scene. Basically, the message says we are doing this at the wrong time while the parent node is busy doing its own stuff. So let's update this line with the call deferred function. The call deferred function is going to do the same thing, but it's going to do it uh, in the next frame. All right, let's uh, run the game again. Now the error messages disappear. And we can see we have exactly 10 animated sprite 2D nodes in the game. So we know the code is working and we just need to cycle through these nodes uh, for the sprite trail effect. So let's do it in the process function. Remove the pass keyword. And the first thing is to check if the array is not empty because we don't want to do anything when there is no sprites uh, in the array. Let's call the is empty function on the array. And we only want to do something when the return value is false. The first thing to do is to get a sprite from the array. Call the pop friend function uh, on the array. This function is going to remove a member from an array and return it to us. And we are going to cast the return value to animated sprite 2D and uh, store it in a variable called sprite. We also specify the type of this variable as animated sprite 2D. So we have access to the properties of the animated sprite 2D. One thing to notice is that previously we only needed to stop the animation 
on the new uh, Sprite 2D. Since the animation was in sync with the animated Sprite 2D node of the player, because the new one was duplicated from the animated Sprite 2D node of the player. But this time we are getting a new sprite from the array. And this one is definitely not going to be in sync with the animated Sprite 2D node of the player. So first we need to set the animation of this sprite to the same animation that is playing on the animated Sprite 2D node uh, of the player. And we also want to sync the frame of the animation. All right, then we can uncommon uh, these two lines and replace the variable name. So these lines are going to uh, set the global position of the sprite and start uh, the fading effect. Now the sprite trail looks good, but we don't get any more. That's because we are not recycling the sprites. Let's go back to the script and uh, at the bottom of the if block, uh, let's uh, tell the engine to wait for one second. We use the await keyword, then we create a timer. Set the timer to one second, uh, which is the duration of the fading animation. And after one second, this sprite should uh, disappear on the screen. So we can recycle it by adding it back to the array. We can call the append function on the array to add the sprite back to it. All right, let's run the game to test. Great, the final result uh, looks pretty good to me. For now, the sprite trail effect is enabled all the time. You can use it in many different cases. In my demo here, there is a small problem. The trail is always on when the player is not moving. I think it's a good idea to disable the trail when the player is not moving. So let's go back at the top of the process function. We want to check the horizontal velocity of the player. We already have the reference to the player, so we just check its uh, velocity.x. And when this value equals zero, uh, that means the player is not moving. In this case, I'll just put the keyword return here. So the rest of the code is not going to be executed. All right, I think this looks perfect. I hope you got the general idea of how to create this effect. Before we wrap up, I want to offer you a discount on my Udemy Godot 2D course. For now, this course is only available on Udemy. In this course, we are going to make a 2D platformer from scratch. Currently, the course is almost eight hour long and it covers many 2D game essential features. I'll keep up extending this course to uh, bring you more exciting ideas. You can find the coupon link to the course in the description below. And all right, see you next time.